Hello, 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 and welcome uh, to the uh, Dear Ball and All podcast. This is your daily recap of the Basketball Africa League. Uh, it's day two, and we'll be doing that. But remember, this is the Ball and All podcast. You can, um, uh, my name is Mpomu Kwani. Um, also, you can find me on Twitter at Mpomu Reki. Uh, but please do like, subscribe, and push and share all the videos that I do that on Twitter and also on Instagram. The banner is going to go up right now to just let you know what you need to do. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel called the Ball and All uh, podcast, which is uh, where the show goes in and we're also live on Twitter as well as we go. And today's show is the BNL um, daily recap. It is day two of the Basketball Africa League. We watched the first game yesterday with, with Rivers Hoopers losing to Patriots of Rwanda uh, in what you would call somewhat of a blowout, but it was a great day because it was the first game. And so today I'm going to be covering the two games that happened during the day, which is the AS Duanes of Senegal playing uh, GS Petroleos of Algeria, Zamalek taking on Ferrario de Maputo. Um, right now, it is the end of the first quarter in the final game of the day, which is the one between US Monastir and GNBC of Madagascar Monastir coming out of Tunisia. I will cover that in a lot more detail tomorrow. So it's just go, go covering all the day all the day games and to give everyone um, a chance, and I'll try to do that at a similar time today um well tomorrow as well slightly a little bit earlier we had a little bit of power problems here in south africa but you don't need to worry about that i am from south africa and i'm doing the show from south africa so the first game of the day um was a group c clash uh between as duanes and gs petroleos interesting thing first thing to see in that game was the, the discernible height advantage between the Algerian team and the team from Senegal. There was still a little bit of length on the team of Senegal, but everyone in the Algerian starting five seemed a foot taller. So you kind of were like, okay, cool. If styles make fights, what's going to happen? And so that's that's ideally what what, what would happen. I would have thought uh, I was expecting the Petroleum team to go very big dominant, very front court dominant, just throw the ball into their bigs. They have um, uh, Mohamed Tawati, who is seven foot one. He's uh, a massive, massive center, 216 centimeters of a man. And he was, you thought he'd get a lot more game time, a lot more ball inside. First quarter, he did try, play, I think he, he played about four, uh, six minutes. Um, then they brought another center who was about six foot eight. Um, and that was very interesting to see. That was Mustafa Adrar. He actually had a very lovely three. Um, but what the problem was with GS Petroleum was that from a Styles make fight situation is that they ne they they got the ball inside the paint. They just weren't scoring at a high enough clip. They were getting the ball deep down low in the middle, missing too many laps, missing too many shots in and around the key and the restricted area. Um, they were they they ended up I think uh, with about forty percent shooting towards the end of that game, which is something that you do not want um, from a team that is. Um, that, 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 that is so heavily front court dominant, but they did try to move away from that. And that was the adjustment I will talk about in a few moments. The, 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 the as to one, his team was just great. It was skill, skills, similar to what you would get in West Africa. A lot of, a lot of lengthy guys, not too tall, but lengthy guys, long arms, really great defenders, which is what you saw, but you also get guys who have, who are quick, who can change pace. And that's what got the, 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 the Jess Petroleum team in trouble. You had guys like, um, Muhammad Fay. Who, who came out with 15 points. You had Lamin Diop, who played 37 minutes. It's, 40, it's a 40-minute game, and the man literally rested for two and a half minutes. He was that good. He was the MVP of the game. He scored 18 points. He had nine rebounds. He had um, four steals and two blocks. It was just an all-round game. What 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 Duanes had was the ability to get the ball in the wing and bring the defender forward and change pace. Um, and also just and also they moved the ball really well. Um, they got they got a lot of the bigs. This is the reason why those that center combination with that seven foot one center Mama Twati didn't work for for Jess Petronas, that he kept on being drawn out of the key and being found in no man's land. It was really easy either to pick up fouls or to get around him because you've drawn him away from the rim and you don't have the rim protector. There's one thing that I didn't like, uh, that, 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 and that's what I loved about, about um, Astuan, is I think their three-point shooting just needs to improve a little bit more, but they were very, very good. Defensively, they were really good. Um, Lamine Diop is just an, uh, is, is a really good player, um, possibly one of the guys who, if, 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 if Astuan is going to go deep, he's going to have to play really, really strongly. The one thing that I didn't like about uh, GS Petroleum was that they had Mohamed Har uh, Harat, who was the 2017 
um, MVP in the African uh, African Club Championships um, that 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 just Petrol has won. Um, he also was the Saudi Arabian Basketball League 2021 MVP. He averaged 29.17 rebounds, and it was how many assists and and, and four assists in that tournament. Um, and so that was the interesting thing about it. It was that he started on the bench, and the question is: this man scored 28 points in this game today um, at a 50% field goal percentage. Um, and he took um, 12 free throws, which is most of anybody. I think the Duanis team only managed to score four, to take 14 free throws in total throughout the entire game. And this one man just took uh, um, 12 free throws and he only played 28 minutes. Yes, it was still quite high in terms of the team, but starting on the bench kind of would have would, would, didn't just make sense to me. You kind of felt that if this guy is your sixth man, unless if he's really he's a big defensive frailty, which didn't seem like it because at times you could use him as the five. And when they did use him as the five, because he is about six foot eight, he could do, he could, he could, he could handle the, the six foot seven. He could handle, um, the, the game was a little bit more in control. Um, they had the spot up shooters on the, on the wing and he could get the ball. He's a point forward. He could just drive um, in and he could, he could score. And that was a great thing about it. It just was really uh, unnerving. Defensively, I think GSP needs to move much, much more quicker. They need to rotate a lot more. They, they get stuck in the zone. And the problem with the zone is that um, you don't, you, you, the man, and they, they like to do either two, three or two, one, two, or two, three, two, one, two. They never do a two, a three, two. Um, and, and, and the man in the middle needs to pick up the runner who's coming in. And the problem is that because you're stuck in the zone, you're necessarily not following the man and you can put a body, you always need to find the next nearest body. And sometimes there isn't the nearest body or the nearest body is already flying above your head trying to get the rebound. And I think that was the one thing that, that really didn't work out well in terms of points in the paint. They really got, they got beaten there they're by two points, which is really weird for a team that was that that's actually of that size and a North African side. Um, they, the turnovers were really, really bad. Um, as Duane has got 26 points off the turnovers just alone, um, from there. Um, they need to improve on their free throw shooting 63% of the free throws. Um, and it was a, it was just a disappointing match, I think, for GS Petrolius, because I think they were they they can be a very dangerous side in Group C. And the problem is obviously obviously losing your first game in this tournament. Looking at the fact you've got probably Zamalek as well as Ferrovario, who aren't bad teams. Um, is Zamalek obviously winning that game by about eight points? Um, by but uh, it was sixteen points actually at the end. So that's something that they needed to con- consider in Group C because you, if you lose and you're playing Zamalek, who um, yes, I mean, like are the Egyptian champions. It's going to be quite interesting to see them play each other to see how they're going to manage that whole inside game that they have, um, that they want to do. Uh, but that's uh, but that was really Im- Im- impressive from a patrol, uh, from a from what was an impressive game from Duanes, uh, disappointing from patrollers. Uh, Muhammad Fay from the three point shot. Oh, there was a point where he was he was three for four by half time. Uh, from the three point chart, he was from the three three point land. He just he could, he could shoot it off the dribble. He could shoot it off. Um, he could catch and shoot. He was just that good and a catalyst to help open up the lead for Duane as well. Uh, Lamin Diop because Lamin Diop was about on two points by half time and then second half he exploded uh, but the most importantly is that his defense he's the defensive anchor of that side and he just made sure that that team uh, Duanes knew what they were doing they just rangy they, they, they're long their wingspans are large they were stealing everything they were just in their faces and the thing about it obviously Petrolis is taller and like there were like three defenders running around the center or the man who got the ball in the middle so that was really good uh, to see um, now let's move on to the next game. Uh, the next game was the Egyptian champion Zamalek against the Mozambican champions Ferrovario de Maputo. Ferrovario coming through the qualifiers. Um, um, let me just check that. The only thing that came through the qualifiers, Ferrovario came through um, as a yeah as a qualifier in the East Division. They came third, second in that. Uh, well, third. I uh, well, second because GMBC came third. Um, and we'll talk about that. And 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 it was really interesting to see how 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 uh, the North Africans were playing, um, to see and they're still used. And I think 
this was the one team that it worked having that inside game and just keep on going to that inside game. Um, Osama Mahmoud, who played the four for them, was really good in that, uh, get it, grabbing a lot of boards, a lot of offensive rebounds. And also when he put up two, when he put up eight points, but the, the guys that, that were really impressive, Walter Hodge, who's there, who's there, effectively their American, um, well, their, their non-African uh, player. Um, and and he, he came out with 17 points at, uh, 50% uh, shooting from the field. He could shoot from anywhere from the three. He could drive. He was just setting the table for the rest of the team. Um, and then the other guy who, who impressed me from Zamalek was Michael uh, Fakuade. Um, and he was just so good um, with a double-double, very good defensively. Just, um, it just helped the team out wherever it was. Zamalek started off flat, uh, but in the second half, they pulled away. Um, and 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 Fakuada captain kind of kept them going in that first half while they were still trying to get going, and before Walter Hodge in the second half started blowing up. Um, the the Ferrovario team in itself really good defensive effort at the at the at in the first half, but in the second half they were a little bit loose, um, committing a lot of fouls. Uh, Zamalek were going to the foul line quite a lot, um, but 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 the guy that people needed to watch was. Alvar, uh, Al- Alvaro uh, Massa, um, who was just Alvaro Massa, who was just good, he scored twenty four points, uh, took eleven rebounds, um, and just was 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 really good. He could shoot from any catch and shoot off the dribble. Um, a really complete basketball player. Demarcus Holland as their guard, the other non African player from from their team, thirteen points and two rebounds. Really loved the way he played. He took it to them when they needed to take it uh, when they needed to take it through. But this game in itself was um was 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 one on 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 the defensive end with Zamalek having seven blocks to one. Um they just pinned down uh a Ferrario who could only score at twenty eight percent, Ferrari had seventy three attempts at um, at the basket, only scoring twenty one. Zamalek scored had fifty nine, only scoring twenty five. Um, and and that's just kind of the the efficiency that the Zamalek team. They didn't need to travel to go to the basket all the time. But when they did, they made sure uh, and close to fifty percent. Uh, well, it was forty two percent. But that was something that that. That, that, that stuck out. And obviously, Zamalek went to the line 21 times, scoring 13 free throws, whereas uh, Maputo only went to the line 11 times. And that was one of the one of the discrepancies in this game um, in terms of how it was 34 points, 34 points in the paper to 26. Um, and, 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 and that's something that uh, that 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 Ferrario needs need to stick to and work on. But one thing for them and Zamalek needs to work on are the points of turnovers. A lot of turnovers today. I'm um, in both games actually, um, and I think both teams need to find a way to try and and, and cut those out. Um, right now, the uh, the third game is Monastir, uh, US Monastir in Group A taking on GNBC Monastir. Um, currently opening up a very big gap of about 17 points. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But let me just give you a recap of the games that are to come. Um, so um, if you look, let me just get the banner out the way. Um, so if you look at the um, at the games in the group stages, um, you've obviously gotten the three games that I've played. Monastir is currently playing now. Um, and then you have uh, tomorrow is Petro de Luanda's Group B clash of Petro de Luanda versus Ayers Police. It's going to be very interesting. Petro de Luanda are like African royalty when it comes to uh, sport. And so they, they, they've got a really good soccer team um, as well as a very good basketball team. And their basketball team has, has, has competed, um, has been African champs in the past decade before. So that's going to be very good to watch. You've got Ayers Sal. Play, taking on uh, Saleh from Morocco, taking on uh, forms uh, the, the the army and police uh, basketball team out of um, Cameroon, uh, the, the the armed forces and police uh, basketball team uh, that's FAP in um, tomorrow um, as well at nine p.m. Um, so we'll probably try and do this in the middle of that game, or try and and just cover the first game uh, of of the day, and then you've got games on the. Um, on the 19th, on the Wednesday, a full slate of games um, uh, with, with, with some of the reverse fixtures with Patriots playing GNBC, Ferrario playing um, Duanes. Um, and as you go along, and for everyone to see the 20th, there's a, there's a break after the 20th uh, with the next set of games starting on the 22nd. 
um, going to the end of those are the final group games happening over the weekend um, for you to see, uh, just to give you uh, something that's going on with the B, B uh, what's happening with the Baal, as they call it in Kigali, or the BAL. But just a nice final uh, look at the groups. Uh, standings, we've only had one game in Group A uh, that puts the Patriots at the top um, on, 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 on two points of the reverse group is getting one. If you lose a game, you get one. Group C, um, the, the teams have all played one game. It's not it's all zeros. It's all have played one. And so I do apologize for that. But you can see the two top teams in Group C being Duanes and Zamalek um, there. And then obviously Group B will be played tomorrow. Um, so that's going to be very interesting to see. Look at the fixtures there. Um, Zamalek play Petroleum next on Wednesday. That's going to be a really tasty clash um, for the North Africans. But this has been your BA, BAL, the BAL uh, daily recap. Please do follow me at Mpomoreki on Twitter and on Instagram. Please do spread the word. Let the people know that there is a daily recap helping you recap all the days. Very interesting watching these battles with, from teams from different corners of the continent and, and, and piecing together their identities as it goes. And I, I'm, I would, I'm going to enjoy bringing you more of that as the as as the tournament goes on still early days lots to happen lots of basketball to be played for myself and Pomutlani please um, have a good night and lesale kakakhis <laughs>